Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. Business rescue proceedings are to begin at Optimum Coal Holdings and the Optimum Coal Mine after attempts to renegotiate a 22-year-old loss-making supply agreement with ESCOM ended in the state electricity utility asserting its rights to past and future penalty claims. Mining Weekly editor Martin Kremer tells us more. Welcome, Martin. Thanks, Leandy. Um, firstly, Martin, Optimum has been supplying ESCOM with coal at a cost below the cost of production for a number of years. Can you explain how this agreement came about? Yes, well, it's a long-standing mine. It's one of the oldest mines uh, feeding one of the oldest power stations, Hendrina Power Station. It goes back to the old days of Gencore and Transnatal. And uh, then it became the ownership that was owned by BHP Billiton. Eventually, BHP Billiton found it wasn't core and it disposed of it to a company that listed it on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange under Optimum Coal. Later, Glencore acquired it from Optimum. And <coughs> Glencore, you know, it's a subsidiary of Glencore at the moment, but it's in a supply position which um, was agreed some time back. And, you know, with costs rising, they found themselves in the red but they've been grinning and bearing it because this isn't really a cost plus mine as some people do think that it's a cost plus mine it isn't uh, you know it's a dedicated mine dedicated to supply um Hendrina power station which is about a 2000 megawatt power station but it's doing so under contract and that contract goes through to 2018 and they're obliged to continue to supply till 2018 which uh, they were very aware of Obviously, they tried to renegotiate it because they didn't want it to, to run at a loss. I think they put nearly a billion rand into it uh, <coughs> to, to keep it going and to honor that contract. So they continued to try to renegotiate it uh, over an extended period. And I think that they were hoping to um, actually also offer Eskim at one stage the coal that was exported because they had a, it's a 10 million ton operation, 10 million ton a year. And, you know, 10.5 million tonne, in fact, and then 5 million tonnes used to go out uh, as an exported item, and the other 5.5 were offered to um, Eskim as part of this contract. But they were even at one stage wanting to offer Eskim the, the full 10 million tonnes or at least quite a substantial increase. They couldn't reach agreement with Eskim. Eskim then started studying the specifications and they came to the conclusion that Optimum Coal was not meeting those specs and uh, it wasn't, hadn't been meeting them historically and it, it um, was going to penalize them going forward unless it met those specs, which turned out to be like a two billion rand penalty. And when the sums were done by uh, the directors of Optimum, they realized that they would be paid the princely sum of one rand per ton <laughs> for the coal which was really a hiding to nothing. And they realized that they'd have to quickly go into business rescue because it just wasn't a viable situation. So that's where it is at the moment. It's in business rescue. If the business rescue doesn't work, it can get worse. <laughs> it can go into liquidation. And that will mean very few winners because you know these liquidations end up with a couple of cents in a rand. And instead of getting two billion, I think Eskim will find itself in the queue with a lot of other people because they won't be a pre preferent creditor uh, and um, you know may end up with a few cents in the rand n nothing near the two billion that they expect him because liquidation can be very harsh and then martin escom also announced an overhaul of its coal sourcing strategy what led to this decision and how will this work yes this is interesting because we've had a tradition of tired mines dedicated mines that was the way things worked, that, you know, you, you'd, uh, you built the, the mines, you built the power stations close to the mines so that, um, you know, often you could feed the power stations via on-land conveyors, which was the sort of ideal. And <coughs> you worked a lot on a cost plus basis. This is a bit of an exception. It's a dedicated mine with a contract, you know, a legally binding contract but it's not a cost plus. If it had been cost plus, I don't think there would have been any business rescue at the moment because cost plus can be quite advantageous for anybody because you know you get your cost from Eskim 
plus your margin. And that's what the cost plus means. So you can't really go into liquidation <laughs> if that happens because you, you know you you've got someone paying for your costs. But this is a different kettle of fish, and <clears throat> so Eskim now has decided. Look, it doesn't like these cost pluses, and it's not even that keen on dedicated because it wants to be at a complete arm's length. It wants to be able to say, we want you know, so many tons of, or so many hundred tons of coal a year for a power station. Put up your hands, who's prepared to supply it and at what price? If your price is good, well, you've got the contract. So instead of actually getting involved in funding the costs, you know, funding some of the equipment, getting involved in the mining, it wants to withdraw itself from mining, and it uh, uses a baking analogy. And it says, um, <coughs> you know, we, we don't want unhealthy bread, which means we don't want unhealthy coal. We want healthy coal. It must be good for our power stations. It mustn't damage them. But we don't want to be the baker. We just want to be the consumer of that bread. We want to stand back now. We don't want to get involved in the mining. And that's its new approach. That's its new approach to sourcing. You know, if you took it to the extreme, it could mean that um, there might be external coal coming in. Because, I mean, who you put out tenders, there might be someone in, a, in America <laughs> that wants to supply your coal, meet that spec. And if they give you a very good price, it would mean that coal could come in externally, which we're certainly not used to. And uh, I'm just thinking aloud. You know, but uh, in terms of the principle of tendering, that, that could happen. So it's an interesting new way of distancing yourself from the mining operations, saying, I buy coal. I want this sort of coal. Who can supply this? Whoever supplies it in the best way, for the best price, you know, gets the contract. And that is the new sourcing arrangement that they're thinking of. And it was enunciated by the new, by the acting CEO of ESCIM, uh, Brian Molefe. And then, um, lastly, Martin, what is the current status of the ESCOM optimum dispute? Are the parties still negotiating, and what will happen to the contract going forward? Yes, uh, that's going to be interesting. Both of them are expressing hopes that they can reach an agreement. So, you know, you have the directors of optimum saying, no, we believe that if we can renegotiate this contract, it will be a win-win, a win for us and a win for ESCOM. ESCOM is saying, you know, we, we're serving summons. Two million rand is the number. Two billion rand is the number. You know, we we are looking to recoup that because we feel you know we represent the taxpayers here, and uh, we are going to enforce the specification. That's what we want. But if you go back to Optum, they'll say to you, "Look, this coal that we offer is probably the third best coal on offer to Eskim, quality-wise. So it's not a low-quality coal. It does suit." you know, the power station. We're not damaging the power station. So m maybe we shouldn't be seen I I in this erroneous picture of being a cost plus, firstly. We're not a cost plus mine. We're on a dedicated uh, contract, which we know, you know, we, we were serving, we were servicing. Uh, and secondly, we're not supplying low quality coal in terms of the quality spectrum. They would probably put it in third position. And they're saying that's fair. And we're not damaging your power station. So take another look at this. You know, Eskim is now under new leadership, so you know, possibly some of the memory has been lost. And, and maybe, you know, they could go into discussion again. I think it would be best if some sort of solution was reached there because nobody's going to benefit from it going into liquidation. Uh, I think that as a concurrent creditor, where will Eskim stand? And I don't think South Africa can really afford to lose 2,000 megawatts, although it's probably not putting out that much, maybe 2,900 megawatts, but that's still a substantial amount. You know, when it comes to load shedding, we can't afford to have that volume of, of megawatts just cut out of the system. Now, from what I can hear, there are 40 t days of coal left. Now, that means that they should try and reach a solution in the next 40 days. Otherwise, I think... Uh, not only will the taxpayers not get those penalty uh, claims back, but you know the economy suffers uh, disproportionately when there's load shedding, and this could increase 
the propensity for that because it means that your supply of electricity could fall. Definitely, I think it's a compelling argument that people put heads together and they sort this out. We saw that um, Optimum also had its mining license suspended. It had its mining license suspended for a very short period because I think people put their heads together quickly and said this is something that we should try and solve quickly. And when they examined the, you know, the, the way retrenchment had been done there, I think um, they probably discovered that it had been done according to the letter of the law and that it had also been minimized. And although you know, more than 1,000 people were earmarked for retrenchment early on, eventually it was in the 300s that um, you know, th they managed to minimize it to that took uh, voluntary packages. And among those, many were actually relocated into other parts of the Glencore group. So you can see that all parties are trying to do their best at the moment, but the coal price is not doing well. So Optimum had to suspend its exports. So it's relying only now on the domestic market. And the, the framework in which those talks were taking place were removed by Eskim when Eskim said, no, we're not going to renegotiate this contract, but we are going to you know, exercise our right to penalize you for not working to spec. Now, I don't think the, um, the specification, as I understand it, is being affected by the distance that the coal has to be conveyed, because the, particularly th uh, the open cost section, there is an underground section as well, the open cost section has got further and further from the power station, further and further from the, the uh, processing plant. And in that period of travel, it can break up. Uh, and I think this is where Eskim is seeing the specification loss. But given that um, you know this is processed and crushed, uh, I think that it, it shouldn't be a huge inhibiting factor. So hopefully, you know, there will be sanity, sanity will prevail, and that um, the two parties will come together and reach a solution other than forcing this into liquidation. Thanks for speaking to us, Martin. It's a great pleasure, Leandi. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis on South Africa's mining industry.